to member statement. Thank you. And I recognize the member for Mississauga Malton. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, friendship is the cornerstone of human connection. It brings the best of human to society, helps to build relationship we cherish. Jan Society of Toronto, a local community organization with many members from Mississauga Malton, are serving the community with Jain words, Maitri Bhavna, which means to be a friend to everyone in the universe. This morning, Madam Speaker, the members of JSOT has organized the launch of World Friendship Year on the auspicious occasion of 2550th Nirvana Utsav of Mahavir, Bhagwan Mahavir at the Legislative Assembly under the leadership of His Holiness Acharya Dr. Lokesh Munichi, a versatile thinker, poet, reformer, writer, world peace ambassador, and founder of Ahimsa Vish Bharti. His resounding spirit of friendship reminds us the value of working together, supporting each other, ensuring no one is left behind. Madam Speaker, Mahavir Swami once said, in the happiness of suffering, in joy and grief, we should regard all creatures as we regard as our own self. Acharyaji's lifetime dedication to promoting religious tolerance and universal value is commendable. I would like to thank him for his tireless efforts, selfless service, and unwavering dedication to the global community, inspiring everyone. My best wishes as you embark your journey in promoting friendship. Let's all work together to build a better world, including a stronger Ontario. Jay Janendra. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Next member statement. Uh, yes, yes. The St. Catharines. <laughs> Thank you, Speaker. Housing is more than just a structure. It's a very foundation for families. When we fail to provide it, it reverberates and disrupts our collective communities and ideals. While private development is vital, building houses remains a paramount public responsibility. It's about championing purpose-built houses. A balanced approach is essential, yet our current provincial strategy leans heavily on private incentives sidelining public housing investments. This week, as we discuss housing affordability, we must remember, if Ontario's strategy primarily incentivizes private developers to build affordable housing, leaving municipalities to short, sh shoulder the burden, we've miss we're missing the mark. In Niagara alone, the wait list for affordable housing spans two decades. Municipalities still feel the weight of transferring social housing funding responsibilities by Mike Harris. Premier Ford, the time has come to honour your commitment to make municipalities whole for the development charges. Ontario has potential to do more. We need comprehensive governance framework and provincial funding to address the housing crisis. It is critical we bolster the construction of non-market homes, particularly for young families and low-income households. We must champion a grant-based approach for non-profit and co-op sectors, support community land trusts, and device, uh, device a robust rental housing strategy. Strategy. If we are not building non-market housing, we risk not enough doing enough. Let's refine Ontario's approach and build a housing future that services all Ontarians. Thank you. <laughs> member statements. The member for Brampton North. Thank you, Speaker. As if you don't know who I am. Uh, Thank you, Speaker. Assalamu alaikum. It's my honour to stand today and recognize the as many as 100 Muslim leaders representing major community organizations across the province, including in my riding of Brampton North. And these organizations do fantastic work to promote the voice of every single Muslim Canadian in Brampton and Canada as a whole. I thank them immensely for the service they provide to our country. Speaker. The Muslim community is strong and proud, and I see it every day in my riding of Brampton North. Over the last number of decades, Canada, specifically Ontario, has been so fortunate to have new generations of Muslims come to Ontario and call it home. Because, Speaker, with them, they bring a tradition of hard work, respect, and commitment to standing up for their neighbours. Speaker, Canada is home to over 1.9 million Muslims, and mashallah, Speaker, there are about a million living right here in Ontario. And I assure them all, I want to assure our entire Muslim community that whether your name is Jamil or John, Mark or Muhammad, whether you pray on Friday, Sunday or not at all, our government has your back. And we, our government has your back and we will ensure that you can safely work, 
succeed, practice, and live your faith. Here, here. I want to thank the leaders who took the time to be here today. I encourage all members of this House to join the reception later at 5.30 p.m. in the dining room. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for London West. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. As MPP for London West and on behalf of the official opposition, I'm honoured to welcome the National Council of Canadian Muslims to Queen's Park today, representing some of the largest, most active and engaged Muslim organizations in Ontario. London is home to Ontario's first purpose-built mosque, built in 1964, and our city has benefited enormously from the contributions and commitment of Muslim communities across the province. Muslims have been pivotal to our economic growth, collective well-being, and cultural vibrancy. In June 2021, Londoners were shaken to our core by the senseless, hate-motivated attack that tragically took the lives of four members of our London family and left a child orphaned. As we follow the case to the courts, we are reliving the pain and trauma of that terrible day, while recognizing in particular how difficult the trial must be for our Muslim neighbours. Speaker, London experienced directly the reality and devastating consequences of Islamophobia, but we know that it is a reality in all parts of our province. With October's recognition as, as Islamic Heritage Month, Ontarians have an opportunity to celebrate, to learn about, to educate, and to reflect on Islam's rich history, its long-standing traditions, and its wonderful cultural diversity. This diversity is present in this chamber, in our ridings, and throughout the province. Today, let us recommit to standing together against Islamophobia in unity, solidarity, and strength, and in unwavering support of our shared values of kindness, diversity, and mutual understanding. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Markham Unionville. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I rise today to share my summer experiences in the wonderful community of Markham Unionville. Over the summer, I had the privilege of spending quality time in my riding. I connect with incredible families that make up our vibrant constituency. I heard their diverse perspectives and listened to their stories. These conversations were invaluable in helping me better understand the unique needs and concerns of our community. We exchange ideas, and I am grateful for the openness and the warmth which I was received. In addition to these visits, my team and I embarked a mission to identify and celebrate the outstanding efforts of our residents in beautifying their homes. We introduced the Landscape Award to recognize those who went above and beyond to enhance the properties. They spread the joys and vibrancy throughout the neighbourhoods and fostered the sense of belongings within our community. I was glad to present over 1,400 awards to deserving homes. Each award served a shining example of generosity and community spirit. These awardees have contributed significantly to make Markham Unionville an even more beautiful and tightly knit place to live. I want to extend my heartfelt appreciation to all those who welcome me to their homes. I also thank those who dedicated time to nominate their neighbours for the Landscaping Award. Together, we are building a stronger and more connected community that we can all proud to call home. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Hamilton West, Ancaster Dundas. Good morning, Speaker. Uh, the Ford government's record on the environment and fighting climate change is abysmal. This government broke the law when it comes to Ontarians' environmental rights and, of course, the green belt grab that threatened the destruction of thousands of acres of farmland and wetlands. Ontarians, Ontario's recent climate change impact assessment report identified the very imminent risk climate change poses to Ontarians' health, livelihoods and property. This grim report was presented to the government in January, but was quietly released seven months later with no announcement. Maybe they hoped we would notice that this government does not have a climate change plan. 
Now we learn through investigative reports that many of Ontarians' gas plants, which were supposed to run only during peak periods, are actually running almost 24 hours a day, and there are many more gas plants on the way. While the entire world moves towards greener energy, this government is making things worse. Let's not forget the cancelled electricity conservation programs that would have saved carbon emissions and saved consumers money. Ontario hasn't built any new wind or solar energy since Premier Doug Ford tore down wind farms and ripped EV chargers out of the ground. The climate crisis is here, and instead of a government that is acting to protect us, we have Premier Doug Ford, who is focused on helping his friends get richer. This is a government with their head in the sand and their hands in the cookie jar. But we, on this side of the House, will continue to push for real leadership on climate change and the climate crisis. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Sault Ste. Marie. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I'm proud to share the news that the Northway Centre has officially opened in Sault Ste. Marie. On September 19th earlier this year, I joined the team from Sioux Area Hospital and many community partners at Northway to share with the public that the 20-bed Residential Withdrawal Management Facility Centre would begin accepting patients on September 25th. Northway Wellness Centre is the home to the Residential Withdrawal Management and Safe Beds program and will be offering services such as comprehensive assessments, medical support, counselling. And they will be able to refer patients and families to all of the related services and offerings within our community. The new facility will provide treatment options to people in our community who are suffering and their families by complementing the significant investments that have been made to build out-of-hospital services and numerous community wraparound supports and services that support vulnerable persons in crisis before they end up in a hospital. These supports are all critical and will help people to heal and to thrive. Northway will be staffed by a mental health and addictions team, including doctors, nurses, and social workers. I want to say a special thank you to the Ministry of Health and to Sioux Area Hospital and all of the various community organizations and leaders for making this a reality and for bringing this incredible new facility into our community. It is going to help so many. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Scarborough Guildwood. Mr. Speaker, I rise today because we need to address the housing crisis, and we must do it urgently. With partnerships across all sectors, my riding Scarborough Guildwood is at the forefront of the housing crisis, where 45% of residents spend more than 30% of their income on housing. The only way out of this mess is by building more housing, but while we need quantity, we also need quality. We can't just keep sprawling outwards, and we shouldn't develop the green belt. We need dense, complete communities, communities that have frequent, frequent fast transit access, neighborhoods that have enough schools to support the students' population. We need our cities to have abundance of housing that is affordable, with rent control so that residents aren't driven away, so that they can spend their hard-earned money investing in their family's future. Communities that have jobs within them, not an hour commute away. And that sustain local business and the entrepreneurial spirit that radiates in Scarborough. As a female entrepreneur, Mr. Speaker, I saw firsthand how important local business is to the spirit of the community. There are good projects that take it upon themselves to provide for this. And we need a government that is willing to prioritize this modern way of housing, not by building new sprawl or paving the green belt. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Whitby. Well, thank you, Speaker. <laughs> to mention as many forms as a critical health care issue that affects patients, families, and caregivers in profound ways. In the region of Durham, there's over 4,000 residents with dementia. 
While there are many dementia care services and programs in place today, Speaker, there's still a lot of work to do. Consequently, Ontario Tech University and Ontario Shore Centre for Mental Health Sciences have launched the Advancement for Dementia Care Centre, a vital new community-based partnership aimed at uncovering solutions to improve the quality of life of patients and caregivers through innovation and research and deployment of new technologies. Speaker, one ADCC example of accelerating care involves a living lab at Ontario Shores where cutting-edge technologies can be adapted, implemented in real clinical settings, and evaluated based on their practical application. This innovation will support patients' psychosocial needs and behavioural challenges. Clearly, Speaker, the partnership between Ontario Tech and Ontario Shores Mental Health Sciences Centre will positively impact the care of people living with dementia and their families living in Whitby and other parts of the region of Durham. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. Member for Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Two weeks ago, members of the Jewish community in my riding of Eglinton Lawrence and across Ontario observed Rosh Hashanah, the start of the new year, according to Jewish teachings. I wish all who celebrated a blessed and pleasant new year. Rosh Hashanah is the first of the high holy days. The following 10 days are days of repentance and culminate in Yom Kippur, also known as the Day of Atonement, and considered the holiest day in Judaism. Through fasting, prayer, and the repentance of sins, Jews make amends for sins committed against God or others. Given the profound significance of these holidays, recent uh, news that I received is very concerning. Within my riding, banners advertising the High Holy Days for local shuls, including the Song Shul, Temple Sinai, and Sherry Shemayim, were vandalized or stolen from their Lawrence Plaza location. A fourth banner, which did not mention the High Holy Days, remained intact. They were replaced and then stolen again, but the fourth unrelated banner remained untouched again. This vandalism, targeting the Jewish community, has no place in Ontario, and thankfully, B'nai B'rith, who is always active, is aware of it and is taking action. Our government, Mr. Speaker, remains committed to combat combating anti-Semitism and all forms of hatred through initiatives such as the Anti-Hate Security and Prevention Grant and mandatory Holocaust education in grade six starting this year. We all need to do our part to promote tolerance, understanding, and respect for all of our neighbours, no matter what their race or religion. Thank you. That concludes our member statements this morning, and I'll remind all members, not wanting to single anyone out, that the member statements are to be 90 seconds. That's one minute and 30 seconds.